One of the reasons why US President Joe Biden does not provide full military aid to Ukraine is that he is afraid of the collapse of Russia, writes Ukrainian publication Zekalo Tizny with reference to sources. Within the limits of presidential arms transfer powers, Biden could have long ago provided Ukraine with the necessary weapons that would strategically improve the situation on the battlefield, but the White House consistently ignores this possibility, the publication notes. According to sources, Washington is guided by several military, technical and political motives. At the same time, it is noted that the risk of the war expanding to the territory of NATO countries or the nuclear threat are not the main ones. The following motives are indicated. Politicians and the US military fear that the excessive transfer of equipment and ammunition to Ukraine may deplete the Pentagon's reserves and the US may be unprepared for conflicts in other parts of the world, for example in the Indo-Pacific region or the Middle East. The political tradition of the USA assumes that decisions that could tie the hands of the future head of state are not made before the presidential elections. Washington still adheres to the 2022 strategy, according to which the war should continue only on the territory of Ukraine. The Biden administration is afraid of the possible collapse of Russia as a result of the victory of Ukraine. In particular, in Washington, they do not want to allow China to return the primitive territories annexed by the Russian Federation in the 20th century. The publication added that Biden adheres to a view of Russia formed back in the 1970s when the USSR was a strong adversary that the US tried not to irritate. Although the US is providing weapons to Kiev, military analysts point out that it is deliberately not giving the Ukrainian army a specific type of weapon. In addition, the ban on using army specific types of weapons. In addition, the ban on using American munitions against military bases on Russian territory is still in force. This is a ban that is illogical and that Kiev has long wanted to be lifted. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken began meetings with top U.K. officials in London on Tuesday, starting with his British counterpart David Lammy. The U.K. Foreign Secretary said their wide-ranging talks would cover the war in Ukraine, efforts to stabilize the Middle East, as well as partnerships in the Indo-Pacific region. Blinken said the U.K. remained an indispensable partner in dealing with Russian aggression, conflict in the Middle East and challenges posed by China. The visit comes amid a busy week of transatlantic diplomacy that also includes a meeting in Washington between British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and US President Joe Biden. In my first week um, in office, I went to Washington, of course. We met for the NATO um, uh, conference. We have been, I think we've spoken nearly every other week um, uh, in that period for which I'm hugely uh, grateful. But on Russian aggression particularly, um, the backing and the um, stalwart position of standing with Ukraine, tackling the Iranian malign activity and of course in our st support and efforts to stabilize um, issues in the Middle East. This is hugely, hugely important. It's also important for um, uh, our partnership in the Indo-Pacific uh, and our approach to China. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the discussions that will embed this strategic dialogue going forward. And I'm very, very grateful, Tony, for you spending the time um, here today. For us, uh, the UK is the indispensable partner when it comes to the very issues that, uh, that David was talking about, whether it's dealing with the Russian aggression against Ukraine, whether it's dealing with the conflict uh, in the Middle East, uh, whether it's dealing with the challenge posed by, by China, and so many transnational issues that have no respect for borders and that have a profound impact on the lives of people around the world. I can't think of two governments, two countries, where we have more daily, sometimes hourly, 
communication uh, on everything that matters, but making sure that we have the strategic framework uh, for that is vitally important, and I'm so glad we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you.